creative continuity. We bring the convention to you. With James Amos. I had co-written a creator-owned book for Image Comics called The End Times of Bram and Ben, and it was a sort of bad behavior buddy comedy. And at that time, Valiant was looking for someone to pitch a new version of Quantum and Woody, mm -hmm. which in its classic sense is a bad behavior buddy comedy with superpowers. <laughs> and I had also written a bunch of superpower stuff for Marvel. <clears throat> and someone brought those books to the editor's attention and was like, End Times, Gambit, superpowers, what? dudes acting like idiots. Look at it. He's, he's got the formula right, right. here for you. Uh, so they asked me to pitch on it, <clears throat> um, and I had been a fan, so I was thrilled to do that, and they really liked what I came up with, so okay. we just started rolling with it. Mm -hmm. Writing this book feels like writing a creator own for me, like, mm -hmm. I just come up with any crazy thing that interests me, and I keep feeling like there's no way they're going to let me put this in the book, and they do. Uh, and whenever I feel like I'm getting away with something, I usually assume that means a bunch of people are going to be like, I don't care for this. But it's been like the most passionately loved thing I've ever done in comics. How did you personally reshape those characters? Um, there's a lot that I love and wanted to preserve from the original, so mm -hmm. that's always good. <laughs> not right. when you're like, ooh, this book needs a total overhaul. Uh, it was not that. I tweaked some stuff. Uh, in the original, they're like childhood friends. Mm -hmm. um, but they become, this accident that gives them powers also traps them together physically. They have to clang bracelets every 24 hours uh, in order to not disassemble into atoms and die. Um, to me, it becomes a metaphor about family, like the people that you don't necessarily always get along with, but you're trapped with, and they become right. like True. central and important to your life as right. much as they drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to strengthen that metaphor by, we made them estranged foster brothers. And Woody was always... In the original series, there was a period where Woody was homeless and sort of abandoned by his mom, and uh, just moving that part of his life to earlier and being able to tell a story about kind of non-traditional families mm -hmm. um, felt relevant to me, and it, I felt like it deepened their emotional relationship and connection more, um, which is a big part of it. As silly as the book gets, there's a lot of um, emphasis sort of a, about emotional relationships especially the dude kind where like you're not going to be super overt about it all the time but you know you get to those moments where right, right. you just have to have sort of simple I love strong you, man, yeah exactly yeah. um and so it's it's a light touch in the book but it goes a long way towards i think making you still care for and root for these guys despite the fact that they keep doing things you're like oh you idiots um, <laughs> you know um but yeah so so we we realigned some other stuff uh, that I don't want to necessarily spoil in case someone chooses to pick up the book. There's like a big reveal later, about midway through the first run, um, that again, you'll see kind of is all about refocusing things on sort of the f family. And you're writing. Did you pull from any of your own personal experiences and just life experiences? Um, well, I also have a super-powered goat, so uh, <laughs> certainly the difficulty of maintaining, you know, uh, one of those. No, I feel like I had uh, behavior problems as a youth. <laughs> so we Woody, Woody, in a lot of ways, reflects my um, less self-control days. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think I think a lot of the emotional stuff, the aspirational stuff, uh, of them just trying to be better people and failing, <laughs> um, is a lot about my life. Uh, and then there's a lot of little like social commentary or little debates characters get into and those tend to all be really personal right. things right. Um, either I'm arguing the sane side against things that I hear people say that strike me as insane or they are me admitting my own insane thoughts through these characters now you work on another thing called delinquents correct oh yeah yeah so delinquents is uh, a big summer fun crossover that we're doing uh, it's a four issue mini series and it's quantum and woody with uh, Valiant's other kind of mismatched hero duo, Archer and Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And Archer and Armstrong, uh, Armstrong is an immortal who has chosen to use his life uh, just basically drinking and carousing his way through all the cultures of history. <clears throat> and Archer was 
a repressed kid raised in like a cult to be an assassin and mastered like every form of fighting, uh, who then discovers his parents were lying to him and manipulating him and that they were basically an evil cult. He escapes and ends up befriending this totally debaucherous, world-weary, uh, living large kind of guy. Um, that's a hilarious, wonderful series written by Fred Van Lente, a friend of mine. And our characters always felt like it makes sense to put them together. Um, they're both kind of mismatched adventure pairs. Mm -hmm. um, and fans have been asking for it since Quantum and Woody launched. Oh, so wow. we came up with uh, what ended up being called The Delinquents. And it is the search for the lost treasure of the hobos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> following a uh, hobo code that hobos have left all around the country. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, the, the map is, the treasure map, was tattooed on a uh, dead hobo's butt cheeks. And that map has since been removed from him. And each of the duos have one half of the map, and they're both after the treasure. So oh. that, is, that wow. is the story. And there's, there's a lot more fun weirdness to it. Um, but it is a big, crazy four-issue adventure. If you've never read Quantum and Woody or The Delinquents, we write the book so that you, this could be your first exposure to the characters and you'll have everything you need to know. Mm. You could just jump in, try number one, get your taste of the characters, see if you dig the book. Um, and if you like a little humor and weirdness in your comics, I think you'll love this. Uh, the, I plotted it with Fred. Um, our artist is Kano, who did some Quantum and Woody issues with me that were fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he also did some work on Charles Soule's Swamp Thing, right. and he then, and with us, really plays a lot with atypical layouts in his art and does really creative, surprising stuff in his art. So I wrote a normal, a boring normal page, <laughs> and Kano redesigned it so the flow, as they're walking and talking, kind of goes a completely atypical route in terms mm. of how you would read the page, moving you through the space. Um, and it's an exposition-y scene. Right. It's still got jokes and fun character. But um, just those kind of things where he, he gets so creative with it in a way that makes a spot that could be more engaging, more engaging. Right. <laughs> like he's, and you can just see he's putting as much thought and creativity and love into everything he does on this book as we do writing it. Um, and it, these uh, Corner of Woody and Delinquents really have been like the stuff I'm most proud of and I'm able to take more time and, and really put the extra love in for the fans. So uh, it's great working with artists who do, who do that as well. All right, this is Harold Gant with Baltimore Comic Con signing off with Damien. Clang!